I am Crafty Andy, and these are my thoughts. It's been a wild few years watching big fraudsters and abusers get taken down. Creep show art by Emily Artful, Dick Masterson by Maddox, Illuminati by her ex and several former collaborators, Boogie being Boogie, and then there's Internet Historian and James Somerton by H Bomber Guy. H Bomber Guy's video put me through a emotional range of sadness, anger, and catharsis. Whatever it is I'm doing, I must be doing it at least better than Illuminati and James Somerton. To sum it up for the sake of context, Illuminati and James Somerton were huge content creators that plagiarized their material from books, articles, and other people's videos. Internet Historian was implicated in this video too, along with several others, but to a much lesser degree. The main point of this was to express my thoughts on these people who I used to watch and was inspired by in the case of James Somerton, as well as do some self-reflecting on my own conduct, which is something none of these people apparently did outside of getting creative in the ways they hid their bullshit. Illuminati's never-ending lol cow series of plagiarism, lying, and threatening people with lawsuits is spread all over this site like a turd shotgun through a screen door. There is nothing I can say about this situation that hasn't already been said. My opinion on the matter is that I feel like she never gave a shit about exposing corrupt corporations and people. It's just a popular thing to do, so she jumped on it. If Blair lived in Uganda, she'd be doing daily videos exposing local gay people to the public so they could be arrested and murdered. The other impactful moment came from H Bomber Guy's companion video on this second channel about Illuminati where I learned that the prison Stanford experiment has had its findings debunked. The one where she brought up the Stanford prison experiment has since been taken down because it's embarrassing. She talked about it as if it was a real, legitimate study with meaningful findings. The problem is, it wasn't. It's been debunked by experts for about 400 years. And then, half a decade ago, internal documents came out proving it was objectively bullshit. Professor Zimbardo lied, basically. This was something taught to many of us in high school and college psychology courses. They even made overproduced movies about it. I'm three years late on this, but me and no one else I knew was up to speed. So out of everything about that bitch, I figured I'd further spread the true info on it. Look it up for yourself. There are audio tapes and interviews confirming it. One of my husbands, I think, made a good point that it indicates the negative human behavior in that experiment is actually more systemic than it being part of our nature, as the original study could try to conclude. The guards and inmates were coached on how to behave. Internet Historian made a video series called Cave Story where he animated the 1925 cave rescue. Except it was word for word taken from an article written by Lucas Riley posted on Mental Floss. Now keep in mind, throughout this summary, I intend to just reflect on what my personal feelings would be on this. All Internet Historian had to do was cite where he got this story from. Hello, I'm Internet Historian. This tale was written by Lucas Riley and posted on Mental Floss. I thought it was great and I wanted to animate it. That's all he would have had to do. At least if I wrote this story, that's all I think he would be required to do. The general public doesn't tend to look up at people who file copyright claims, throw legal weight around at anyone who's a fan or just doing something as a compliment. All that aside though, if I were to put myself in this writer's shoes, considering how much money internet historian likely made when it came to his video, I would have liked to have some words with him and try to strike some kind of deal. How the article writer would have felt about this is on him and his publisher, but at least Internet Historian wouldn't be fucking his public perception. Contacting the original writer would be best as it could have ended up in some kind of collaboration, making both of them bigger than they already were, getting their names out there. Overall, I don't hate him on a personal level. I don't know anything about him personally. And out of everything else that I know of, this was the only real fuck up. I hope he learned a lesson. James Somerton, however, was someone I was a patron of for about three months before this H Bomber Guy video dropped. Even though his page is blank, anyone else out there should check their membership list on Patreon and make sure you delete him off there, lest you potentially get charged again. Before I get into how pissed, disappointed, and boosted my confidence got regarding my own skill after the revelation of James Somerton, I would like to share my general attitude when creating art and video work. Since way back in high school in 2000 and fuck, I was always annoyed with a lot of artists' attitudes online, especially after college and learning from other professional published artists. Many online art makers are so protective and touchy with their crude work 
and made up characters don't steal. Not understanding how references and tools are used in commercial artwork, such as Drew Struzan using projectors and tracing his subjects for his posters that he made. The first step after the, the comps and Jesu in the board is I'll lay my board flat and project my comp down onto the board. What would take days to draw in by eye and by hand, I can trace in to use the ugly word. I need to do portraits of accuracy and I need to do them fast and this is how I do it. I never understood it. Unless you are pretending to be me, misrepresenting your own skill, or unofficially using someone else's work to promote some event or sell off, why should anyone give a shit? Do you think the big popular artists out there like Todd McFarlane constantly browse sites like DeviantArt to make sure some kid isn't tracing their work, shame them on Facebook and in a beware page when they aren't even making money, or lying as if they did it themselves? Uh-oh, I posed myself in my ratchet painting that I did as a commission. I guess that means I cheated somehow. These people are so fucking stupid, they wouldn't be able to tell shit from ice cream. On my profile, I always put, please do. I do mean do. Repost, trace, and recolor any of my art. Just link it back to this page and your YouTube channels. Share me your recreation. As long as you're giving credit and not trying to monetize plagiarism, why should I give a fuck? Just be honest about what you're posting. When I post a life drawing that is clearly from a picture or portrait, I just label it as practice. Some of them are actually commissions of pictures people gave to me as something to recreate as a drawn art piece. This drawing from Alex Cockburn I came across in 2009 resonated with me for all these years, so recently I decided to finally color it on my own as color in practice. I wouldn't get mad if someone did this to one of my pieces without asking, even if I were to say no when asked. Why should that stop them? So I expect the same treatment in return, considering I'm not going to make unofficial prints or some shit of this, so who cares? My only reluctance to share it with the artist is out of being a possible nuisance. I'm shy like that. Though I will share it anyways, and if they don't like free advertising, coloring one of the drawings I downloaded from them over 10 years ago, I'll cross that cringe bridge when I get there. When I'm making videos about anything, and I pull some information I got from a credible article or source, at least one I think is credible, it ends up on screen with the publication and headline visible. For my growing up with Sonic the Hedgehog video when it came to Sonic R, I read out loud and showed off the magazine the review of that game came from in order to sum up my experience of it, which was literally reading that review in the magazine. Other games I didn't have any experience or knowledge of, I used a clip from other people to quickly sum it up. In fact, I'll just let this clip I stole from Pariah695 speak for me. But yeah, Shadow gets the idea from Mr. I'd say, here's a clip I stole from X. Obviously saying, I stole it, is me being cheeky, because when it's used, the title and channel it's from is on full display. And I'm not just reading words they said in place of that. I don't expect people to ask me permission to use clips from my videos, and I don't think they have to, though I would love they let me know so I can see what they did with it. Good or bad, I don't care. Which is what I did. On top of showcasing the channel name and video title in my own video, I then would go out to the original page where that video was published and thank them in the comments section for it. I'm working on a script for commentary on the Plague Dogs movie, paired with some art pieces I made for it. There is an effort to avoid other reviews and commentary so that my opinions don't get unintentionally manipulated or skewed. However, according to James Somerton, that is just stupid, needless, busy work. I should just find some forgotten review written on a forum only the Wayback Machine can pull up and claim I wrote it instead. Why come up with my own words when I can simply regurgitate someone else's? Nearly everything he said in the majority of his videos was exposed to be taken from somewhere else. Somehow James managed to steal two queer authors' words at once. He copied a book word for word and even removed mention of the people being quoted so it sounded like he was saying their words too. That's not something you do by mistake, that's something you do when you want to take the credit. Which he does. In future videos, James talks about evil queens as if it was all his ideas. Two moments in this summary I want to emphasize size on. The first being the IT article written by Rachel Brands. 
and Brands is one of many people whose name didn't make it into his dumb fucking credits. I reached out to Brands about her essay being used in this manner, and she told me she'd never been asked permission to use it, but she already knew it happened. You see, she was a fan of Somerton's work, and even supported him financially on Patreon, so she saw this video as soon as it went out, and realised it was copying her. This is so fucked up. A queer writer who supported James financially because she thought he was making original work discovered she was funding the plagiarism of work like hers, including literally hers. Brands was never paid by the website she wrote this essay for, since at the time she was writing for Exposure, which she definitely didn't get when James didn't even fucking credit her. Somerton makes a lot of money doing this. Tens of thousands of dollars in Patreon income, ad revenue, his many sponsorships, and another massive payday we haven't even gotten to yet. The thought of this happening to me or someone I know was already upsetting, so I can only imagine how fucking surreal it could have been for this writer to watch someone they were giving money to use their work without credit and didn't get paid for themselves. The snakiest moment came when H Bomber went over the co-writer James hired, Nick Hergott. Going by the video, Nick writes his own material and didn't have a clue or knew the extent of James's plagiarism. The fucked up thing was when it was revealed that James is using him as a shield against plagiarizing accusations, and at the same time presenting himself as a person who is willing to stick up for anyone who dares come after his co-worker and friend. Whenever plagiarism comes up, James brings up how great Nick is for writing all the videos in a totally not suspicious way. Because if it was like somebody accusing me of plagiarism, especially recently, the videos are so heavily written by Nick that they're a, they would be accusing Nick of plagiarism, and I will not fucking tolerate that. Remember, James knows there is plagiarism in his videos because he did it. So when he responds by saying, no, Nick writes the videos and he would never do that, it's like he's setting him up to take the fall. What a fucking snake. Snake! Outrageously insane snakey crooks! Him being a marketing expert sure is telling now. He knew how to present himself as professional and play me and many others for fucking fools. Goddamn, are you even fucking real? Or just an automaton that parrots material inserted into your slot hole? It starts to feel like Somerton is just an extremely cynical loser with a business degree who, like Blair, and around the same time even, saw the success of video essays and decided to half-ass his way into them by stealing shit. This is, on the whole, how business people see creativity. They don't respect it. It doesn't matter. It's beneath them. What's it like to not give a shit about anything? Just treating life like a video game where the one who gets the most money wins, as if it's a high score. When it comes to the Blair bitch and James Santorum, I can only imagine they see people like us as complete idiots. I'm not using names of more famous friends I have to impress people like their Yu-Gi-Oh cards I get to throw out as some way to gain a false sense of credibility. Writing and rewriting scripts with my own thoughts and opinions as opposed to just researching what the most popular thing is and then ripping off the words another person wrote. Not going around boasting about the money I may or may not have donated to other individuals or charities. That's a good waste of virtue signaling points I could have obtained there. Sharing experiences and advice with other creatives as opposed to using them as a means to an end. Making relationships entirely transactional. Something I do need to try and do more, but the challenge is the same as everyone else I know that does this, and that we all work full-time jobs on top of being creative and entrepreneurial. James and Blair get to do their shit full time. Must be fucking nice! How much money has James made from them? How much money has he made in fundraising to start a film studio on the back of this career he got from them? while making no films. Gay writers are already poorly recognized for their work and contributions. It's a common problem. It provokes a deep and meaningful question, I think. What is the real, tangible impact of gay erasure? There is something a little bit soul-crushing about watching a man be paid thousands and thousands of dollars to literally plagiarize the phrase what is the real, tangible impact of gay erasure? This is the impact. We all eventually get old, senile, die, and ultimately forgotten. The most egregious plagiarists covered by H Bomber Guy probably see that as justification to piss on the faces of their fellow human beings as competitive obstacles. I see that as the reason to enjoy myself and do things I find fulfilling. 
Whether commenting on a recent event, topic of the day over the making of related artwork, or making a weird hour-long video about my personal experience growing up with a sexy blue hedgehog and their sexy squirrel girlfriend. In the end, I can look back at my work and growth and skill proudly. What people like James get to look back on is how much of an effective bullshitter they were. Sure, it may be true that we all have our price when it comes to surrendering our values and principles. I've never been tested in that regard, so I'm not about to assert myself as above it. The honest answer is, I just don't know. That aside, there sure is a lot of people who did just that over the mere promise of large amounts of capital and recognition. Some succeeded for a time, others suffer for not playing the game. Proposing or promoting unpopular ideas like the many of openly queer lefty writers on YouTube do all the time. Putting effort into making something actually watchable instead of pandering to the popular sentiment the kids browsing YouTube currently have right now. How many channels involve nearly daily uploads talking about how some movie or video game has gone woke? You know how it is. There's male and political, white and political, straight and political, cis and political. As of writing this up, the popular topic of the day is Grand Theft Auto 6. Hey, where are the white women at? Did you know black and Latino people live in major cities of Florida? News to me! Even this video, by the time I'm done editing and posting it, probably won't do well because it didn't come out at the peak of H Bomber Guy's video. So what do I do? A lazy knee-jerk reaction video? Live? And unrehearsed? Or do I just declare I don't have enough time and never do anything ever because playing video games is so much easier? For many out there, I can see how discouraging it can be to witness plagiarists being rewarded. Well, at least in the online space, it only worked for so long, didn't it? Unless any of these people are billionaires, they ain't going to survive coasting forever. For me, it was validating and cathartic to listen to these critiques from H Bomber Guy. Any other creative I think would do good to learn from this. Like Stunlocked, a video game commentator who focuses on indie games. I'm rooting for him as he tries to make this a career. Onion Nuggets, the show I edit clips for, a show for the uneducated, by the uneducated. Commenting on news, world events, fun topics, or just plain old bantering. My friend Uncle Taco on Twitch, who's not only streaming as much as he can, but he's also working full time as well. Entertaining and building up an audience in his own way. Whatever me or anyone else out there is doing, we can take comfort in knowing that we are doing it better than Blair, better than James Somerton, and even at our worst, we know we're at least not Brett Keen. I also do not look forward to the overabundance of self-proclaimed plagiarism experts that are going to emerge after watching maybe 10% of H Bomber Guy's video and jumping on this trend. These are just my thoughts though. Subscribe, like, comment me ideas and suggestions, Patreon for exclusive art and early videos, merchandise at the online store, check out the Weird Zora's channel for weird furry shit. Pause off for gaming skits and highlights from live streams that can be found on the Pause Off Live channel. Also check out my friend Uncle Taco on Twitch for some other streaming fun business. Work in progress is streamed at the Crafty Andy channel. Subscribe, like, and share. You heard what I said, now see it done.